We are now entering peak earnings season, which means many of the companies we own are reporting their earnings this week. That includes Google, Visa, Microsoft, Meta, Starbucks, Apple, Amazon, ExxonMobil, Chevron, MasterCard, etc. This is the big week. And the results of these earnings reports not only have the ability to move a stock up or down massively, but could shift the entire market. Just as an example, last week, Genuine Parts Company, ticker symbol GPC, fell over 20% after reporting earnings. This lower price boosted the current dividend yield to 3.5%, which is historically high for a dividend growth company like GPC. And that fall in stock price happened because they missed their earnings per share target by 22.31%. Also, the company revised their full year 2024 outlook, lowering revenue growth by 1% to 2% and dilute EPS to $8 to $8.20, which was a reduction from the prior guidance of $9.30 to $9.50. A bad earnings report can tank a stock, and often it's deserved. However, a good earnings report can also cause a stock to surge. For example, last Wednesday, Tesla reported after the bell, and the stock is up over 25% from that point. And why did that happen? Well, they beat their earnings per share estimate by 24.14%. Also, they generated two $2.74 billion in free cash flow in the quarter, which was their highest in two years. And on their earnings call, they announced key details around their 2025 and 2026 product and business rollout for their robo taxi and new vehicles. These were key details which were left out of their more product focused and spectacle focused We Robot event. So if you're investing in individual stocks, you really should pay attention to what happens on earnings and what these companies say in their earnings calls. In today's video, I'm going to share 15 of the most important stocks, in my opinion, that are reporting earnings this week. These are companies that I own in my portfolio or have on my watch list. I'll share what their estimates are so that you know later this week whether or not they hit or missed. And finally, I'll give a brief stock analysis on each of the companies. Let's roll the intro. My name is Zach, this is Dividend Data, and you should leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the video. Please sign up and use my stock research tool, which is available at DividendData.com. Also, I would like to mention that this video is sponsored by Earnings Hub, which is the official earnings partner of Dividend Data. If you're a user of DividendData.com, you can find your way to the site by using the new earnings calendar link on the sidebar. Also, I will have my link in the description and pinned comment of the video. This will take you to EarningsHub.com, which you can use for free. And and they have a very easy, simple to use view where you can see all the companies that are paying earnings in that coming week. And this can really help you plan out your earnings season so that you know when your biggest companies are reporting. You don't have to go in blind, you can be prepared. And you can get a lot of value for free on Earnings Hub, but they also have a paid plan, which I suggest that you sign up for. And by the way, when you use the link on DividendData.com or through the pinned comment, please sign up and create an account with Earnings Hub. And this is so that they know I sent you. And you can get a lot of great value for free, but they also have a pro plan where you can get full quarterly call transcripts. They have AI summaries of the earnings call if you wanna speed up the process, or you can listen live to earnings calls as they happen. And this is another big feature. You can get alerts for an unlimited amount of ticker symbols. You can get that via text message, email, and app. This helps you stay ahead of the game so that you know when your most important companies are reporting earnings. That way, you won't be caught off guard by a 20% decline or by a 20% increase in one of your stocks. So again, use my link and create an account so that they know I sent you. And thank you to Earnings Hub for sponsoring the video. All right, so let's dive into the week. McDonald's, ticker symbol MCD, is reporting before market open on Tuesday, November 29th. Now, McDonald's is a stock I use to own in my dividend growth portfolio, and I know many of you in the audience still own McDonald's stock. And it's down over 7% in the past week because they just had an E. coli breakout 
out in their quarter pounder. And you can see here that as of a day ago, 75 people were affected and I'm pretty sure one person died. So that means this earnings call is going to be a big deal. What they say about the outbreak and how they're reacting to it may cause the market to move dramatically. Also, if we pivot to the financial results, they're expected to have $3.19 in earnings per share and $6.79 billion in revenue for the quarter. So if they miss on earnings and investors don't like what they hear about the E. coli breakout, then McDonald's stock could tank. And if that does cause a large sell-off, then I would turn on my long-term investor hat and start to look at it with more of that lens, because McDonald's is undoubtedly one of the highest quality brands in the world and will be around for a long time to come. But the thing is, McDonald's was close to trading at their all-time high valuation. But if we start to move back down to those July prices of around $245, then McDonald's may be one where worth adding to. The company has a long history of earnings growth, and it has historically been a dividend growth machine with a 10-year compound annual growth rate of 7.61%. That's a sustainable payment too with a free cash flow based payout ratio of 62% and 53% based on net income. And for older investors, McDonald's really is a great combination of yield with growth because the dividend yield is 2.42%, which is not nothing. So if you could get McDonald's closer to that 3% yield, then that's a pretty reliable dividend growth stock. And prior to this recent outbreak, Wall Street analysts were projecting McDonald's to grow over the coming years. EPS is expected to grow at 8% in 2025, 9% in 2026, 6% in 2027, and 10% in 2028. And with the recent fall in stock price, it is actually trading 5% below the consensus price target of $308.58. Another stock I want to cover on Tuesday after market close is Google, ticker symbol G-O-G-L. Analysts are projecting that they will come in at $86.32 billion of revenue for the quarter with earnings per share of $1.84. And I actually think they will beat in the quarter given that they came out ahead in Q2 and Q1. Google is a company I am heavily considering investing in, especially since they just initiated a dividend. It's one of the most dominant tech companies in the world, which is why they're being accused of being a monopoly. The business is an absolute powerhouse with fast growing earnings and stock price. Revenue per share is growing at an 18.41% 10 year compound annual growth rate. Free cash flow per share is growing at a 20.55% 10 year compound annual growth rate. They have a fantastic balance sheet with growing shareholder equity. They've got $100 billion in cash and short term investments, and they're significantly under levered with negative $72 billion net debt. So far, they've only paid two dividends, but I suspect they may be a future dividend growth stock. The next stock I want to share is Visa, ticker symbol V. They report after close on Tuesday. This is the number one stock in my personal dividend growth stock portfolio. Historically, this is a company where every single quarter they beat and raise guidance. However, in Q3, they missed revenue by 0.22% and they matched EPS estimates of $2.42 per share. And I used that somewhat poorer earnings report as a buying opportunity where I loaded up a lot of my Visa stock position. Analysts are projecting that Visa will report $9.48 billion of revenue for the quarter and $2.58 of earnings per share. And if they hit those numbers, then it's a continuation of Visa's long history of growth. And you guys on this channel, you know that I love Visa stock. They have a fantastic business model with crazy high margins. They have very low capital expenditures, so the company just generates free cash flow like a monster. And they pretty much give most of that back to shareholders through share repurchases and a growing dividend payment. The Visa dividend has a 10-year compound annual growth rate of 17.92%. The two most recent increases were 15.56% and 20%. And this dividend payment is super sustainable at a free cash flow based payout ratio of 19%. And then on Wednesday, automatic data processing, ticker symbol ADP reports earnings before market open. ADP is another popular dividend growth stock and one of the smaller stocks in my portfolio. They are expected to report revenue of $4.77 billion in the quarter and earnings per share of $2.21. They did beat on both last quarter and have beaten on earnings per share for the past 10 quarters. In recent months, ADP has gone up pretty sizably in stock price, and I would like to see a sell-off before I buy any more. And ADP is a great business, especially since they transitioned more to being a cloud software company. This brings in reliable and growing subscription revenue, and it's powered dividend growth. 10-year compound annual growth rate of the dividend is 12.76%. Free cash flow-based payout ratio is 60% for ADP stock. After close on 
on Wednesday, we have Microsoft, ticker symbol MSFT. Microsoft is the number two stock in my personal dividend growth stock portfolio. They're expected to report $64.48 billion in revenue and $3.10 in earnings per share. And Microsoft, I've made many videos about the stock in the past, so you guys know how I feel about it. It's just a growth machine. And the main drivers for Microsoft is going to be the continued growth of cloud computing. Go and watch my full Microsoft stock review video in the past if you want to know my exact thoughts on the company. But in terms of this quarter and what I'm looking at in terms of financials, I want to see earnings per share growth re-accelerate. For the past year, they've been hovering around this $2.95 mark. And to be fair, revenue growth has been high in that time, but they've been increasing expenses. And at least analysts right now are expecting earnings per share growth to re-accelerate with a new all-time high of $3.10. So I will be paying attention to that. Also after close, we have Meta, ticker symbol M-E-T-A. This is another big tech giant, which is a new dividend payer. Analysts are projecting $40.13 billion in revenue for the quarter and $5.21 of earnings per share. And this is another stock that I am just kicking myself that I did not buy during the fall 2022 crash. At that time, I was much more focused on buying Microsoft and starting my position in that, which was also great. But Meta was a no-brainer buy at that time. And since then, the company's earnings have exploded back to all-time highs, and they have started a dividend payment, which I suspect may be a dividend growth growth payment in the future. That remains to be seen, but I'm certainly considering adding Meta to my portfolio over the long term. We also have Starbucks, ticker symbol SBUX, reporting earnings after the bell on Wednesday. This is a high quality brand and company which is going through a little bit of a turnaround at the moment. They had a terrible Q2 earnings, which led to the CEO being fired. I covered that on the channel and I used that to buy a small stake in the company, which has turned out pretty well. But the reason why it has turned out well is not yet yet due to business results. It's actually because they poached the CEO of Chipotle to become the new CEO of Starbucks, and the stock surged massively after that. And he recently just announced a little bit of his plan, and this is going to be his first earnings call as Starbucks CEO. So this might be one that I actually listen to so I can get a little bit more of a feel of whether or not Starbucks is going to be a position I hold on to in the future. They did just announce a 7% dividend increase, which I like and is a continuation of their dividend growth policy. But the real question with Starbucks stock is whether or not they can return to double digit earnings per share growth in the future, which is what analysts have been projecting previously onto Starbucks stock. It remains to be seen. Thursday before market open, MasterCard ticker symbol MA is reporting earnings. Similar to Visa, MasterCard is a fantastic dividend growth company. They are very similar businesses and basically a duopoly in the credit card and debit card market. Both are fantastic companies in terms of the economics, and I may add MasterCard to my portfolio as well over the long term. Analysts are projecting revenue of $7.26 billion for the quarter and $3.73 of earnings per share. I'll be paying attention to it, but to be honest, MasterCard and Visa are pretty boring stocks in that they have such dominant market positions, and this whole tailwind of transitioning to more digital payments that's been going on for decades. I don't want to be repetitive, but these are just very high quality businesses. And then a little more controversial, we have Altria Group, ticker symbol MO, reporting before market open on Thursday. This is one of the largest positions in my dividend growth stock portfolio, and it is my highest yielding stock and highest dividend payer by far. For the quarter, analysts are projecting $5.35 billion in revenue and $1.35 in earnings per share. And if they hit that number, that would be 3% growth of earnings per share year over year for Altria Group, which really is completely fine because I'm not expecting high growth out of this company. It's more of a low valuation, high yield stock where I just want reliable, low single digit growth. I mean, if growth reaccelerated, my returns would be fantastic, but I don't need that to happen. The main factors I'm going to be paying attention to will be their new smoke-free products, including Enjoy. This is their new vape product, and they've been rolling this out over the past year. So I'll be paying attention to the progress of that. And then I will also be paying attention to the progress of their on nicotine pouches, both of these are growth businesses for the Altria Group. And then in terms of negatives, I'm going to be focusing on the volume decline of cigarettes. And as long as that stays steady to historical levels, that's completely fine. It's known that this is a declining business. The volumes of this will continue to decline, but they continue to raise prices in order to offset that and maintain their profitability in that product category. So with Altria, I just want to see slow continued growth of earnings per share. And then that trickles down to slow growth of dividend per share. They just announced a 4% dividend increase 
increase for the Altria Group, and they pay out the majority of their cash flows as dividend payments with a 75% based free cash flow payout ratio. And even with this recent surge in stock price, the current dividend yield is 8.21%. If you're looking for reliable and growing high yield dividend stocks, then the Altria Group, in my opinion, is one of the best you can pick. I was buying it closer to a 10% starting dividend yield, which is crazy when you consider that this is a stock where the dividend is growing at above 4% a year. And then Thursday after the bell, we have Apple, ticker symbol AAPL, reporting earnings. I own Apple. We all own Apple, one of the highest quality businesses in the world. And I'm not sure if it exactly is right now, but it's in the conversation as most valuable company in the world. Right now, it's a horse race between Apple, NVIDIA, and Microsoft. And the reason why Q4 will be important for Apple and the earnings call more specifically is because we're going to get some information about the new iPhone launch and how they think it's going. Now, the full financial impact of that iPhone cycle will not be till Q1 2025, but we're going to get some context about it on the earnings call. And for Q4, analysts are projecting $94.41 billion of revenue and $1.60 of earnings per share. And I haven't bought more Apple stock since I'm pretty sure 2021. And the reason for that is that growth has slowed at the company. Earnings per share growth has basically been flat. And the only reason it's increased at all is because of the massive share buybacks. Apple is still buying back over 3% of their shares every year. And last fiscal year, that was $77.5 billion. And Apple is an extremely high quality and dominant business, but they are looking for that next growth opportunity. The hardware product of the iPhone does not seem to be a growth business moving forward. They've kind of hit their ceiling, it seems like. And they've been pivoting more to monetizing based on services and app store fees and all of these things. People have been wondering if AI and their new Apple intelligence will be that next thing that puts them over. As someone who follows what's going on in AI, I'm kind of disappointed with the products they've put out so far. They don't seem to be a leader. But then again, they might have some stuff going on behind the scenes because Apple likes to reveal it at the last moment when it's perfect and about a launch. So maybe something like that happens in the future, but we'll see. And then after Apple, we have Amazon, ticker symbol AMZN. Again, one of the best big tech companies in the world, not a dividend growth company as they have a historical practice of reinvesting most of their cash flows into growth. However, since 2023, they have focused on juicing their earnings per share, and that got the stock price back out from the fall 2022 crash to all-time highs. And over the long term, Amazon's just going to be a continued killer business. And you'll hear people talk about how these big tech companies are overvalued, but I really just don't think they're paying attention to the business realities. These are the most dominant companies in the world. They have great financials and great balance sheets. And when you're analyzing stocks, you really always have to go back to the business. You're valuing the business. It's not just financials in isolation. So for Q3 2024, analysts are projecting $157.14 billion of revenue and $1.14 of earnings per share. And that would be 21% growth of earnings per share year over year. And then after the bell, we have Intel, ticker symbol INTC. And those of you that have followed the channel for a long time, you know that Intel was one of my biggest investing mistakes. However, I have since learned from my ways and I have avoided the stock like a plague in recent years. However, at some point, the turnaround will start to happen. To give a quick recap, their earnings per share have just completely collapsed in 2022, and it, it's still just hideous. And during that time of their cash flows evaporating, they decided it was a great idea to invest in the future in domestic manufacturing, and they ramped up capital expenditures by 10 to $15 billion a year more. In 2023, they spent $25.75 billion in CapEx, which made free cash flow negative $14 billion. And this has not gotten better yet. Last quarter, they had negative $3 billion in free cash flow, and the one prior, negative $7 billion. And strategically, you can make the argument that they're doing the right thing thing as they're basically trying to become like US version of TSMC where they manufacture for third parties, but that business barely exists yet. So financially, it's just hideous to look at. But Intel will eventually start to turn around when they reduce their CapEx spending and start to grow these new business units. Also, not to mention they had completely missed the AI wave entirely, similar to how they missed mobile. They're just getting shellacked across the board in terms of CPUs in competition with AMD. And then their data center business is just getting killed because all of that new data center spend is going towards parallel computing and GPU focused systems to run and train AI models. So all of that spending is going to NVIDIA. 
So Intel is just getting killed. So maybe a year or two from now, Intel will start to turn around, but it doesn't seem like it's happening this quarter. For Q3, analysts are projecting $13 billion of revenue and negative two cents of earnings per share. That's not good. That's not even including the CapEx spending. So their free cash flow is just, so their free cash flow will, will, so their free cash flow will likely be deeply negative again. And to be honest, as I'm looking at this, we know that they cut their dividend by 66%, but I, I don't know why they don't just cut it completely. I feel like you have to go all in on your new approach. They could use this money. And then Friday before market open, we have two of the oil giants, which I own in my dividend portfolio. Exxon Mobil and Chevron. I'll talk about them both at once since they have shared economic characteristics. $95.61 billion in revenue for Exxon expected with $1.96 in earnings per share. And that is a decline from the Q2 earnings of $2.14 of earnings per share. And the reason for that is that oil and gas prices in the past quarter did decline. And with a lower oil price, the profit margins are lowered for oil producers like Exxon Mobil and Chevron. But in terms of historic levels, these are profitable prices. So Exxon will continue generating large profits which exceed their current dividend payment and this lets them continue to build up their balance sheet grow their cash position, decrease their debt, which they have done since 2020, invest into the future, and return capital to shareholders in a sustainable manner. What I like about Exxon and Chevron is they do not run their dividend policy and everything like other, in my opinion, stupid oil producers. You'll see them where they just have no dividend and then they spike it massively when they're making tons of money and then they cut it. And Because oil is a very cyclical business where at times business is booming and you're raking in profits and other times, you know, you might be losing money. Exxon is a company that manages with like a decades long mindset, which is definitely preferable if you're a long-term investor. And then finally, I'm going to share T. Rowe Price, ticker symbol T-R-O-W. This is a company I own in my dividend growth stock portfolio, but I've been considering selling it and reallocating to a different stock. And I'm just being honest about it. I've been thinking about it, doing a little more research. So what I like about T. Rowe Price is how simple their business model is, where it's just fees on mutual funds and ETFs, although mostly mutual funds. And what I like is when the value of those assets go up, your, the amount of money you make goes up as well. And this business is super high margin too, with 84% gross margin and 30% operating margin, 27% net margin. The company generates strong free cash flows. Their balance sheet is managed fantastic with growing shareholder equity. They don't do any stupid things with debt, negative $2.3 billion of net debt. The business is just pretty simple and it's well run financially. They return capital to shareholders via dividends. It's a quarterly payer that continues to grow over time and they have large special dividends after they build up a large amount of cash. They'll redistribute it all at once. And the last time they did that, their stock surged massively. So that's part of the reason why I don't think I want to sell T. Rowe Price is because their earnings per share is starting to uptrend again, which makes sense with the market going up. So I know eventually they're going to do one of these dividend payments again. So I think it's somewhat inevitable that the stock price will surge. And it is undervalued at current prices with it 25% undervalued given the consensus price target among analysts of $139. In fact, it's currently trading below the lowest price target on Wall Street of $113. So that said, the biggest problem with T. Rowe Price is that people aren't buying mutual funds as much as they used to. The fees are higher and all the money is moving towards passively managed ETFs. And I've been looking into this, T. Rowe Price is growing in ETF business and it's growing, but they're still having net outflows in those mutual funds and the growth isn't offsetting that. And as I was mentioning, ETFs do have lower fee structures. So even if they grow that business, it won't be having the exact same profit margin as the mutual fund business. So anyway, I've been doing some research on it and I might make a full video in the future. Analysts are projecting $1.83 billion dollars of revenue for the quarter and two dollars and 28 cents of earnings per share and that's just under 10 percent growth year over year but i will probably listen to this earnings call because i want to just learn more about it in general and whether or not they're still having net outflows and mutual funds with the improvements in the market and i guess also how that etf business is growing as well so anyway those are all the stocks i will be paying attention to during this earnings week please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video and i'll make sure to do more of this style in the future and remember that earnings hub is is the official earnings partner of Dividend Data, so please use my link in the description and pinned comment and create an account
account with them, then you can get access to all of the great tools I showed throughout this video. Please leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel and sign up for DividendData.com if you want to use the stock research tool I've been showing throughout. And this is at the end of the video and it's a little bit of a tease, so only my hardcore viewers will be here. Major update coming to DividendData.com in the next week. I'm very excited about it. I've been working on it for a bit and I don't want to spoil anything, but you guys will be very excited. See you in the next video.